Dr. Weening, can you think of a type of disease that takes a bodily process that you need to live and is good for you, but it turns on you all of a sudden? Autoimmune diseases. You guessed it. Autoimmune diseases. One of our viewers, or a few of our viewers, asked for a video about autoimmune diseases, yep. so here you go. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzel. Autoimmune disease. It's insane. Your immune system is supposed to protect you. Now, all of a sudden, your own immune system is doing harm to you, attacking your own body. Right, and your immune system is supposed to protect you against you know, viruses, bacteria, parasites. It's like a security system, but for whatever reason, it's not totally understood. It turns on itself, on different cells, whether it's your joints or your skin or your organs, and attacks them. And we, and we know how crucial the immune system. We've always known it, but we really saw it when AIDS came about in the 80s, right. 90s, because that virus attacked the immune system, and then we saw people who were infected with that virus and developed AIDS, got the HIV virus, were developed AIDS. Yep. The kinds of diseases they got were fairly rare, yep. but because they had no immune system, all of a sudden they were getting these kinds of diseases because their immune system couldn't fight it. Okay. So we know the immune system is important, but in an autoimmune condition, your own immune system is attacking your body instead of the pathogen it's supposed to protect you from. Yeah, and there are more than 80 different kinds of autoimmune diseases, but the more common ones that you've probably heard of include... I'll name one, you name one. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis. We see that one all the time in the office, and we treat a lot of people with damage from the rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, lupus. We see a little bit of lupus, but mm -hmm. certainly it's more on the organ side, the kidney side, the cardiology side. Uh, type 1 diabetes, right? That's the diabetes you get earlier in life and you need insulin to treat it. We see that and that's an autoimmune disease. Yeah, multiple sclerosis. We, we do not see a lot of this, but certainly affects your mobility and is a progressive disease often of younger people. We do have to take that into account if we're yep. thinking of replacing someone's knee. Absolutely. Uh, next one that we, I mean, I've seen a lot of my patients who have had this is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Okay. Fun to say, not fun to have. No, it definitely it really results in hyperthyroidism. No, it's attack, your immune system is attacking your thyroid. Yeah. Uh, number six is psoriasis. So this is an autoimmune disorder of your skin. And you've seen people probably that have had uh, plaques typically on their elbows and their front of their knees. So we see this because it, uh, it's often around the joints. It sometimes actually can cause arthritis deep inside of the joints, but also as a skin condition. Yes, psoriatic arthritis. We yeah. see that. Um, next one I would say would be celiac. Okay. Disease, right? Gluten insensitivity and that tricks your immune system into attacking your intestines. Which is really debilitating and a lot mm -hmm. more common than you think. And the last one is inflammatory bowel disease, so Crohn's and colitis. So obviously the gastroenterologists are seeing most of this, but sometimes we can see arthropathy or arthritis related to these types of yeah, diseases. Yeah, that's how these come into our practice, just yep. because there often is an inso associated inflammatory arthropathy with some of these autoimmune diseases. Okay, so how do you, how do you know? How do you get diagnosed? What kind of symptoms, I guess, do these people have, first of all, and then how do you diagnose Well, I guess it? the symptoms depend on what system in your body is involved, right? right? For example, in rheumatoid arthritis, we would see it with people who are developing pain in their joints. Most right. common. It can be one joint. It can be more than one joint. It can yeah. be the knee. It can be the hip. It can be the hands. And it's often it's very vague. So like joint pain, fatigue, skin changes, and then some other end organ stuff like later on down the road. But oddly, it's quite vague. Okay. And then... It w and we can distinguish sometimes between an osteoarthritis or a rheumatoid arthritis on the x-ray findings or the pattern right. of the arthritis. But really the best way is some blood work. Yeah, so looking for a couple specific markers like rheumatoid factor, anti-strand DNA, um, yeah. and then inflammatory markers like erythrocyte sedimentation rate or ESR or C-reactive protein that are more kind of generic. Um, but Yeah, important. sensitive but not very specific. Yes. Okay, so you've got the diagnosis. Okay. okay. Uh, and then there are some treatment options for okay. it. First of all, can you cure it? So, so unfortunately not. Um, usually once you have an autoimmune disease, um, A, it sticks around, sometimes it progresses, and the other thing is that once you have one, sometimes you're more susceptible to others, and they're actually shockingly common. So one in 10 people will develop an autoimmune disease, more common in women than men? Yeah, 80% of the people are women, and we don't totally understand a combination of, of hormone differences and genetic differences, um, mm -hmm. but we don't totally understand why that's the case. But yes, it, usually in the 15 to 50-year-old range, so it's not a really, really young disease and typically not a disease of the elderly. And the fact that it's not curable is unfortunate. Yep. However, the good news is there's a lot of treatment options that can help people with autoimmune diseases live normal, long, healthy lives. Right. Let's touch on those sort of classes of treatments okay. briefly here. So first of all, you have an anti-inflammatory. It can be right. a steroid or a non-steroidal, but anti-inflammatory is the hallmark of this because inflammation is one of the key mechanisms that your immune system uses to do its job. Right. 
No, number two would be immunosuppressants like methyltrexate. This is a very common medication that many people have heard of. Some of you may be even on. Please leave a comment if you're currently um, living with an autoimmune disease and help share kind of your strategies for dealing with it. So immunosuppressants are the second class. And then the, the most recent class and the third class I'd call is a biologic medication. Right. These are new class of medications. They're called biologics and they can actually really control these autoimmune disorders. They are newer. They are fairly expensive. Um, but they are super effective in many people. Right, so I would say probably the take home message is if you're having vague symptoms and you're not sure what it is, advocate for yourself. Like we say on our channel and so many of our videos, if you have symptoms that are persisting and are debilitating, talk to your doctor and then your family doctor would do an initial assessment and then decide if there's an appropriate specialist. So there's a bunch of different specialists that would be dealing with this. So potentially an immunologist, certainly a rheumatologist, sometimes a gastroenterologist, yeah, it kind of oh. depends on or an which, which system is involved with your particular autoimmune disease. Right. So not curable, but very treatable, yeah. uh, fairly common. And thanks to the viewer who asked, who asked us to put this video out there. Hope now, it helps. Now you know. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, and check out our other long-form content over on YouTube. Help us get to a million subscribers. And if we're already at a million subscribers, <laughs> when you see this, help us to get to a million and one. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.